So um, welcome everyone. We are doing a workshop on deploying applications on Google Cloud Platform or GCP. And yeah, let's get started. So um, first of all, this workshop is presented by the Developer Student Club, which is powered by Google developers. And um, we'll get more into the details of our club. But today, all of our panelists are um, leads of or the exec team of this club. And I'll start by introducing myself a little bit. I'm Brittany. I am a junior in Applied Data Sciences. And I'll pass it on to Harsh if he's here. Um, hey, guys. Uh, I'm sorry, I was in a bit of a chaos. Um, so I'm Harsh. I'm a junior majoring in computer science. And I'm currently the technical lead at Developer Student Club. And I'm really looking forward to working with you. Hey guys, my name is Nate. I'm currently a junior studying computer science and I am currently the secretary here at, at DSC. Um, yeah, this should be fun. Yeah, awesome. I don't think Sasha's here today. She couldn't make it, so. All right, agenda for today, uh, we're gonna start off by talking about ourselves a little bit, um, what we are and what we do. And then we're gonna intro uh, into what Google Cloud Platform is as well as Quick Labs, which are a part of GCP. And then we're gonna go into deploying applications, which is one of the Quick Labs. And we're going to be doing three labs or go going through three labs under deploying applications, which consists of deploying Python Flask, a Python Flask web app to the app engine flexible environment, as well as Node.js. And then finally, we're gonna cover Firebase and then wrap up. All right, so first, uh, who are we? What is this Developer Student Club? We, DSC is basically a university-based group for students interested in dev and technology. Our club is open to any student, all majors, all backgrounds. And in general, our members, we, we have a wide range of skill sets among our members. We range from beginners to um, more advanced members who are like people who are either just starting out with dev or people who just want to uh, explore and refine their skills. We have members from all sorts of different majors in different disciplines. So it's not just limited to um, EECS, IST, or engineering. We have members from SMEAL. I think we've also had members from like econ majors as well as uh, management information system majors and even geography majors. So basically our club is um, a way to help you guys explore and try new things. You don't even need to have a technical background. We will be walking you through all the things that we do. In, in general, DSC, our aim is to help students connect and learn and grow together. Um, we want everyone to meet other students who share the same interests or peers from like a completely different background and field. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what we are about. We basically try to provide opportunities that support students who are passionate about what they do. And uh, we hope to foster learning, sharing and collaboration. In general, our club meetings consist of professional networking and team building. We've had people, guest speakers come in and talk about um, their experiences as, or their pathways as tech people. We've also had professors come in and talk about um, their, I guess, specific knowledge area. And we also explore uh, Google developer resources. So DSC, um, we're very lucky to be able to have access to um, Google Cloud Platform for free. And we are able to basically play around with it and do whatever we want with it. And it's an awesome way to learn how to um, cloud compute and the different components of cloud computing. And lastly, another part of um, Developer Student Club is the Google Solutions Challenge, where basically students get together in teams and build solutions to real world problems. So it's a good way to get some practical experience with dev and um, building something from scratch. And yeah, if you're entrepreneurial, this is like an ideal space for students to create and test new ideas to solve like an existing problem. Um, 
Google has a very wide range of tech tools. So we establish, we have a well-established platform to help in creation and that journey. I know that for me, I joined in order to gain more technical skills that I would normally learn in my courses and meet and network with more people. I've also gotten the chance to talk with PSU alumni that are employees at Google as well and learn about Google more as a company and how I can best prepare myself for potential opportunities at Google. So it's a very valuable experience. And um, I have put our LinkedIn as well as our Instagram um, here if you wanna follow us. And if you scan that little QR code or go to that link right there, um, you can basically register for our club. All right. So what is Google Cloud Platform? So GCP is, um, it's a service that offers uh, numerous cloud computing ser uh, different services. It has the same infrastructure that Google uses internally. So like YouTube, like Gmail, like Google search. Um, basically it's, there's over 90 different sort of products and services such as app engines, um, cloud databases, storage, and also ways to manage big data, uh, and even artificial intelligence. So uh, like the list here says, those are all different services, services that uh, GCP offers. And next, what are Quick Labs? So first of all, um, Quick Labs are usually a sort of paid service that Google offers. And um, like I said, DSC, we get to access them for free. So join our club, you'll be able to play around with cloud computing um, for no cost. And yeah, it's a learning platform to help you gain some experience with cloud environments. Um, it, the, our free access um, allows us to also earn badges in topics such as cloud architecture, machine learning, BigQuery, and a lot more. And these badges, if you can see on the side here, Basically, you can display them on LinkedIn or whatever online profiles you have and show potential employers um, what you've uh, learned through <clears throat> playing around with GCP. And today we're gonna go through a few labs under the Deploy Applications Quick Labs Quest. Normally during our meetings, we would go through these labs live, kind of like a live lecture style and you follow along with us. But since we only have an hour today, I wanted to include as much information, quality information as I can. Um, so what we did is we went through some of the labs ourselves and picked out the most important parts of the <clears throat> quest. And um, for time's sake, we're basically gonna just simulate running through these labs. And if you wanna do some live labs with us or get the credits to do them on your own time, join DSC and come to our meetings. You can get free access to these services. All right, so. Deploying applications. First of all, um, what 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 does this mean? Um, basically, deploying applications means putting your application, web app, whatever, into a web server so that it can be accessed publicly through an URL. So we do this all the time. We go into a browser and we type in www whatever.com and then see a fully functioning app. So the goal is to make an application that you or anyone else created actually available to users. In general, it's a process of packaging application files and transferring them to a target app server. And it's a series of activities that makes a software system available for use. So there's no standard um, or like singular procedure, every system is unique and depending on the tools that you're using and what you're trying to accomplish, the deployment process will have to be changed to your requirements. Um, so basically under this quest, we're gonna be deploying sample applications on Google App Engine. Um, and Google App Engine, it basically allows you to build and deploy apps quickly using popular languages like Python, Node.js, and frame, or frameworks too, um, without having to worry about infrastructure or like any sort of security issues. So this way you can just focus on the coding aspects of your application. And we're also gonna talk about how frameworks can be integrated with GCP. The frameworks 
basically are just, they support app development and that's where all the layout, layout and logic and application is executed. All right, first lab uh, is deploying a Python Flask web app to the app engine flexible environment. Um, we're going to talk about how to deploy a simple web app to the environment, as well as accessing the Google Cloud client libraries for storage, vision, and data store. And lastly, we're going to talk about how to use the cloud shell. Quick summary. Um, Again, we're going to deploy um, the web app to environment and the example app that we're going to be using is, is it, it basically allows you to upload a photo of a human face and it tests how likely that person is to be happy. Um, and really quick, what are the app engine applications? So basically it's a platform as a service for developing and hosting web apps in Google's only or Google's um, own data centers. They're easy to create and easy to maintain and easy to scale depending on um, traffic and data storage changes. Uh, there's no servers to maintain. So again, you simply upload your application or your code and it's ready to go. The um, flexible environment that it's basically environment, like I said, that supports a lot of different programming languages. There's also a um, standard environment, but we're not gonna talk about that, but the standard environment only uses Python. So depending on what you're trying to do, you can either use the flexible environment or the standard environment. All right, so first this right here, that is the cloud console. Um, that's kind of the, first thing that you see when you access or when you log in into the Google console. And um, right here on the left, just really quick, that's kind of all, if you scroll down this side, this is where you see all of the different services that it offers. Um, today, we're just gonna go into the shell, cloud shell directly, which is this little button right here. Um, and Really quick, most of the work uh, today is in the shell. It's basically like a command line access to a virtual machine instance in a terminal window. Terminal window. And um, the usually if you, when you do the labs, they're always gonna have step-by-step -step instructions. I skipped all the setup stuff so we can just get to the main point. Um, basically, once you activate this, connect to the environment with a cloud shell, um, you're ready to go and Really quickly, the main sort of commands that CloudShell uses is gcloud. So these are two examples of um, commands that you can use. The first line basically just uh, activates, you don't need to know this, but the first line activates the account name. And then the second line is for listing the project ID. All right, so first um, we're gonna get the sample code. This is the Python, Python Flask app that I was talking about where you detect um, faces and how happy they are. And in what you're gonna do is take this code and put it into the shell and um, clone the GitHub, GitHub repository. So um, the next step is to authenticate API requests. And the reason we have to do this is because this <clears throat> application uses um, like different storage as well as vision API uh, from from Google Cloud, so we have to basically ask Google if we can use it. Um, any client application that uses API must be authenticated and grant access to in order to <clears throat> actually work. So data store storage vision APIs are automatically enabled here, but in order to request them, we have to serve account credentials. So you're basically putting in your project ID um, and then asking for permission. And really quick, what we're doing right now is <clears throat> to, we're gonna test this application locally. So this is going to be on a local web server. We're not deploying to um, the app engine just yet. And this right here is basically what happens when um, the service account is created. This, that, that's what you see down here is kind of um, what happens when uh, permissions are given. 
All right, so testing the app locally. So we're gonna test the sample code from that GitHub repository. We're going to start the environment by um, doing this command right here, which is virtual environment. And then um, we're going to also install the different dependencies. So this is essentially just creating a isolated Python 3 environment named uh, env or env. And we installed the dependencies for this project with a requirements.txt file. So what happens is we can see that um, on this line right here, and then we go, we type in app create, and then we're able to create an app engine app. So um, down here, it's just asking you like what region you want it, but it doesn't really matter. You can do whatever region. <clears throat> okay, so after you uh, select the region, you should get, you would get this message, which means that um, the app engine is created and you're ready to deploy. We, I didn't put this step here um, because there, was, there wasn't really any output, but we also created a storage bucket, which is a, the bucket is like a basic container that holds your data. So everything you store in cloud storage must be in that bucket. The bucket is also used to organize your data and control access to the data. All right. So we created the um, app engine, and now all we have to do is um, execute the main.py file. And once the application starts, there's, we are given the um, option to preview on the cloud shell. So uh, we're gonna, we selected preview on port 8080, and then a new tab opened um, to see this down here, which is what the application is. Um, that's that's a very basic like Flask web app. It just allows you to submit like photos of faces and um, using Cloud Vision API, it detects the faces. So some key information, um, basically everything about the photo is stored in data store. Um, the API that we called from before, that is Google Cloud's NoSQL database and it's accessed any, each time a new user visits the site. Uh, the application also uses Google Cloud client libraries for storage, and the client libraries makes it easy to access the cloud APIs. All right, so just testing the application. I put in a photo of Einstein. He's not smiling here, so I mean, I don't think he's unhappy, but um, because he's not smiling, the output, it's being blocked by that thing, but the joy likelihood is very unlikely. And then I did one where he is smiling and um, the joy likelihood is very likely. So it worked. All right. So that was, by the way, th that was done on a local web server. What's going to happen now is we're going to deploy the app to the app engine flexible environment, the um, cloud server, essentially. It's going to have the same output, but um, there's advantages to doing it on um, the app engine. So. The App Engine Flexible uses a file called app.yaml to describe an application's deployment configuration. And um, we use Nano here to add, edit that. Um, Nano is like a tech, text editor. So the um, env underscore variable section sets up the environment variables that will be used in the main.py file once the application is deployed. And what you see down here, just this short little thing here, that's the basic configuration needed to deploy a Python 3 app engine application. Um, and then here is just the last couple steps to deploy. So you just, all you have to do is type in gcloud app deploy and then it starts um, running. And this is what you will see in the cloud shell. It will take quite a while. Um, this is, I stared at this for like 10 minutes for it to run. And you're basically watching the application get um, built. So the, <clears throat> the app engine flexible environment, it's automatically provisioning a virtual machine behind the scenes and then installing the application 
and then starting it. So after the application is deployed, you can open the app on your web browser, on your web browser in like a generated URL. So you have to set up a Python web app and then um, deploying it basically to this environment instead of like a local web server, which is what we did before. And the advantage is that essentially cloud service providers offer managed servers at a fraction of the cost. So doing it on your own could be very expensive depending on what you're trying to do. And also um, GCP, it's very flexible. There's a lot of benefits such as scalability. So if you have some sort of really big website with um, a lot of data, um, cloud is the way to go. It also has security features and um, there's also lots of other services that can be integrated with web apps. So um, it's things that are hard to do on your own. GCP um, gives you that service at a very low cost. Um, some of the technology that's accessible with uh, the help of cloud, cloud platforms include like facial recognition, artificial intelligence, um, and also like serverless databases. And facial recognition is kind of one of the APIs that we used um, today in that application. Okay, so, oh, by the way, the output is the same thing except it's running on uh, a cloud server and not your local server. So this next one, this next lab is deploying Node.js um, application in the app engine. And it's essentially the same thing, but we're going to explore a different framework. So we're just gonna see how to create a Node.js Express application on the app engine, as well as update, updating the code without taking the entire server down. All right, um, setup is all the same. You go to Google console, um, and the only thing that you have to do is to make sure the app engine admin API is enabled. And we can see here that it's enabled. All this really does is that it manages the app engine applications. Next, um, we're getting our source code. So same thing as before, we're gonna clone the example source code from the home directory and install the dependencies. So with the dependencies, because this is Node.js, the command you use is npm install. npm stands for node package manager and it, it's just help, it helps with building tools for front end development. So after you have that installed um, really quickly running the app locally, you can just start the Node.js app with npm start and the only output is <clears throat> basically hello world. Um, and if you, if you can see here this, URL, that's more of like a preview. It's not, so no one else can access it besides you. All right, um, so how, how we're gonna deploy the application to the app engine, we're going to first um, run nano app.yaml and then this right here is the basic configuration needed to deploy a node.js application. Um, you don't really need to do anything else besides put it in um, into the text editor and then exit out of exit out of the text editor. Okay, so deploying the application, the first time deploying again takes a few minutes, but it's because the app engine environment is automatically provisioning a um, virtual machine and then starting the application. So again, same thing, gcloud app deploy, you see all of the different steps it's taking, and then it ends up um, saying that it's updating services. Once that actually runs, it's just gonna show that it's done. And the same thing is shown, just the hello world app, except now it has an actual URL, and this URL is, um, accessible by other people, not just you on your local server. All right, really quick, updating the application. So in this step, uh, what you're trying to do, you're setting up a um, Node.js application and making sure, and every time basically a new user um, comes onto your application, they get a, like a unique ID. Uh, that identifies that user. So using this code right here, 
Um, and also you update um, app.js, which is one of the files, but I didn't include that part because it's a little complicated. But essentially with this, with this line right here, you can get the UUID, which is universally unique identifier. Um, and you can see right here, this is that um, ID. Every time someone visits a page, a new ID is generated for them. And it, the, the purpose of this is to uniquely identify information in computer systems, but it can also be used as database keys. So for example, if you wanna keep track of um, people who visit the, um, your website, then you can store this as a key to the database and it will be unique with um, every visit. This is also useful if there's a chance that multiple components may independently generate a non-unique identifier. So you're gonna have overlapping keys. Um, so by using this, this is a good way to make sure everything is unique. So after you run this, you should see a new app that displays this UUID. And in this step, you've basically just updated your Node.js application without any sort of downtime or needing to shut down the server. And yeah, that is um, how to write and deploy um, different frameworks onto the App Engine web application. And next is Firebase Web. And I'm gonna pass it on to Harsh. So, hey guys. Uh, so I'll be talking about Firebase and what essentially Firebase is gonna be is probably gonna be the easiest way to deploy a web app altogether. Uh, more or less like web app, uh, Firebase is like a service that's provided by Google that's mainly to publish web applications, iOS, Android applications on the app stores and stuff. So it's a very, very powerful software and it's and it's very compact and easy to use. So uh, uh, Brittany, could you go to the next slide? Mm. Okay, so this is how the interface of a, um, what do you say, like a Firebase uh, project looks like. So initially you have a lot of services on the left, which are like uh, like authentication, which you can add your, say maybe your Google sign-in authentication, your cloud Firestore, which is like an, uh, a, data a database for all your people who have, attend who have uh, logged on to your website and stuff. And then you have a regular status check on your website that how many people have viewed it, how many people have actually not seen it, and what's the current status, and what are the maybe things that, it keeps on recommending a lot of things. So I definitely recommend to get a good knowledge on it and definitely work on it in the future. So, uh, Brittany, next. Brittany. Okay. Looks like Brittany is gone. Uh, Brittany. Are the slides not changing? Hello? Hello, yeah. Are the slides changing for you? Hmm. Harsh, can you hear us? I think you dropped the call. All right. Oh. Yep. Yeah, he dropped. Okay. I can keep talking about this. Um, basically, um, while he's gone, Nick, can you message him, by the way? Sir? Can you message him? Oh, he's back. Yeah. If you have a uh, sorry, fixed connection, it might help if you turn off your camera. I find that sometimes that helps with Zoom to stay okay. connected if you're having issues with that. Thank you so much. Um, so the very first thing that we would be doing is setting up your, uh, like setting up your G, uh, that's your Google Cloud itself. And that would be probably the first and foremost thing that you would do. So as Brittany mentioned earlier, uh, G Cloud is a command line tool for Google Cloud. And it lists out all the projects that are there within the Google Cloud at that point, and which one you prefer to work with is chosen at later. Uh, Brittany, could you go to the next slide? Um, okay. So uh, now, um, so our first thing is first and foremost thing is to get us 
your sample code itself. So here we kind of extracting a code from Git repository, which is Python doc sample dot Git. And once it extracts, these are the commands you generally get. And that's all. And also at every stage in um, in GCP, like when you're working for Firebase, you always get a project ID and you need to make sure that this project ID that's mentioned in the red box at the top left corner is something that's very important for you to keep a hold of. So because that is a pro that's an ID but that's very essential and it's gonna be used everywhere when you're deploying your web app onto Firebase. So once you create, um, once you do all that, your next step is probably going to Firebase where you set up your project and you add your project name. You follow all the instructions and all the criteria that you want to check and check not, and probably just click on add Firebase. And that allows you to create a, um, create a project for that particular, um, that particular project that you're working on. And next, um, okay. So now uh, what we're working on is adding, uh, add a Firebase web app. So now what we need to do is once you create your project, you need to kind of register your web application. So you're trying to implement that, okay, so this is my web app, this is my project, and this is the app that's gonna stay in this project, and this is the one that's gonna be deployed. So there, as you can see in the top left, in the left, uh, right side, sorry, uh, there are like iOS, Android, and a command prompt. So that's totally up to you on how you wanna deploy your web application. And it can be even a mobile app, so you can choose accordingly. And even if it's like through, like say terminal, like a, like a web application that's want, that you wanted to go to a global server, then you go for the third one that's like a, through a command prompt. And that's where you start registering your app, mentioning all the details for it. Next. Um, okay, so uh, one of the essential features that generally a Google, um, like Firebase permits is like enabling the Google sign-in, a uh, Google sign-in authentication, which basically allows Google to keep a track of that anyone who's entering through your, uh, coming onto your web app is a secure person and is not trying to get into the server of Google and stuff. So this is a very essential method for you to probably enable and definitely it's something that you must work on. And that it's like, it's a very easy process. You just have to, after you add your project, you have to go to authentication on the top left corner and add your sign required signings that are required for your project. Uh, okay. So now um, once, uh, once you have uh, created a project and registered a web application on the Firebase, our very next goal is to essentially uh, install, uh, set up Firebase and install it onto our uh, Google Cloud um, GCP console. So first thing that we would need to check is what are the latest version of our Firebase? And it should be generally 6.0 plus. Uh, and the best part about that is that Google keeps on updating their Firebase version on GCP automatically without you kind of wanting to do anything else, like without you actually taking some extra time to do that. And initially you do it as in, uh, so once you start creating your Firebase project and initializing it, you do a Firebase login and no local host. And this is basically, it's like a remote shell that uh, initially starts up. And so that it starts up on a remote local server and doesn't let your project go out in the public without you making sure everything's good. Uh, Brittany, next. Uh, so uh, now uh, we what we do is first we kind of navigate onto the project that we have. So in this case, we're taking, walking with a friendly web app chat and that's how you kind of start about it. And then you add it to your Firebase project. So that for that, you use a Firebase use dash um, dash dash add. So that's something pretty much essential. So another thing that could be done over here is giving a project an alias is helpful if you're managing multiple projects and you can also switch between your aliases so that it makes it easier for you to kind of just play around with your projects and so that you can navigate in a much quicker and smoother way. So now the best part of the entire Firebase console comes is where you actually deploy it. And right now it's uh, done remotely uh, on your local server. So that's how like if you go for Firebase serve, uh, serve only hosting, and then it kind of creates a URL that's called the localhost 5000, 
which if you guys have worked with web applications before, that's kind of like the starter. That's like generally when you try to execute your code, that's the first thing that that's the URL on which you generally kind of go about. So where 5000 is your port number and local host is your computer itself. So, so now there's there are a lot of additional things that Firebase kind of allows and it allows you to import the Firebase SDK. It allows us to kind of have a user sign in. So as I mentioned about the authentication part. So that's something that allows Google to track the users of this particular web application and how Google can prevent itself from malwares and other cyber hacks, uh, cyber threats. And also it allows writing and establishing Firestore. So what essentially Firestore is, is that Firebase has its own database system called Firestore. And it keeps a track of all uh, activities that have been going on with this web application, who has been logging in, who's been um, actively been using and all that kind of stuff. So just to make sure everything's in uh, sync. And also it reads uh, and synchronizes messages and images so that it keeps a very coordinated um, effect for the users. And it also handles notifications for users who want to use it frequently. Uh, let me next. Uh, so as you can see, this would be your final product where you would have like a URL that's a local host 5000 and where you can manage your images, you can manage your chats, you can manage your email. And then like, as you can mention the top right corner, it's showing the quick lab account, which, which you signed in, and then you can sign out of it. And then there's a lot of other things that Firebase can allow you to do. And Firebase being a very powerful software and a tool to learn. I would definitely recommend working with it and it because it helps you a lot in understanding how uh, how you can deploy it and it's one of the easiest ways to deploy a web application onto the global servers. So this is another sample that I was working on which is a coronavirus tracker. Um, so it's basically just a, a react web application and <clears throat> it just basically is kind of like um, shows all the number of cases and how many people have been impacted. It has a dynamic regression graph. It has an interactive world map. So, and it's all deployed on the um, on the web. So, if you want, you can use this link and view it. So that's totally fine. And it's just one small example of how powerful Firebase is and how impactful it can be in terms of web development. So, I highly recommend anyone who's using it. So, go ahead. Okay, cool. So that was a really quick crash course with uh, Firebase. And um, we are nearing 40 minutes, so we're gonna wrap up. Ooh, okay. All right, um, so that was only three labs out of the um, quest, the deploying applications quest. Um, I know they went by really fast and it's very different when you're not actually coding it, but um, we did try to just take all the the very important parts and um, show that. But if you want to get involved and try this yourself, there's also three or four other labs under this quest that you can do. And one of them is Ruby on Rails. And that one is very similar to the Python and the Node.js one. Um, you're essentially just um, taking a Ruby app and then deploying it onto the flexible environment. The next one is the deploy ASP.NET core app to either the app engine or Kubernetes uh, engine. ASP.NET, by the way, it's like an open source framework for building modern cloud-based applications and it uses C. Um, and then Kubernetes, it's a open source project that runs in a lot of different environments. Um, there, it's, it's a container orchestration system for computer app deployment, scaling, and management. So that project is just a very simple, like hello world app um, in like you're, you're creating it and then replicating the application to run on Kubernetes. The next one is Memcache is one of the more um, popular open source caching systems, and it's just a temporary store for frequently used data in web apps. And yeah, what that lab is, is deploying a cluster of distributed 
memcache servers to um, Kubernetes. And then um, the very last one, App um, Apigee for API management. That one, um, it's basically it. what that one consists of is um, the API management is for allowing organizations that use APIs or create APIs to monitor activity and um, ensure that all the needs of the API are being met. And usually if there's a lot of rapid changes to um, a company or like customer demands, this is where they need to use API management. All right, so um, that is all there is to this quest, but there are a lot more. That link right there, um, I think we can probably drop it in the chat, but the Quick Labs link, um, you can go to the website and then look at all the different quests they have. And they it does, again, if you do it by yourself, there's a fee, so scan the QR code right there or go to that link and join DSC so you can explore these and do them on your own time. And that is it. Open to questions. I'll keep this slide up for a little bit so people who want to join can use the links. If any of the attendees would like to speak to ask their question, simply use the uh, raise hand feature or send it through the Q&A or chat. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording now. Okay.